those people that come in here and pray for you and hold your hand and cry with you and tell you that this is gonna work, it has to, that's what has me really putting in to, to get there and to keep going. Oh my God, sorry. Um, and uh, I co-own the Little West Indies with my brother Ricardo Simpson. On a day where I had my head down on my desk, that's it, there's no more, there's no more money, there's no more, like I, I don't have any more resources, what am I gonna do? I get a call that says, congratulations, you've been approved. Like literally, my head is on my desk and I'm like, what am I gonna do? I get a call, you've been approved. I'm gonna tell you why we're important out here. There are a lot of mixed children out here and their parents love them to death, but they don't know how to care for um, a, a little girl who has hair like yours or like mine. So it's beautiful hair, beautiful texture that we can appreciate, but they don't understand it. So when they come in here, we have staff that can actually walk them through and look at the texture of the child's hair and help them. Tiffany Callender, I'm the CEO of the Federation of African Canadian Economics. FACE was a vision by a collective group of people that decided that we needed to address a long-standing issue and barrier that was faced by black entrepreneurs across this country. Access to capital, access to support and resources to start and grow their businesses was a gap that was evident uh, for many, many years. So if we think about what it is to get a traditional loan, you need to have assets. You've got to have a credit score that looks a certain way. You have to have a relationship with a financial institution, really. So how do you do that when, historically, there have been barriers for you to amass those assets, to be able to have wealth that you can then invest in your business or leverage to start your company? If we could work with partners to identify a way to make sure that that access to capital, but more importantly, the information and support that's required, could we do that for our community? Now, uh, 2020 well, was a challenging year for everybody, so what a year to do it. But sometimes under pressure, this is where we're able to find the best solutions. Si j'ai pas fait, je pense que j'aurais pu j'ai plus dans mes économies pour dans mes fonds personnels pour mettre dans l'entreprise. C'est bien aussi parce que c'est c'est comme ça fait moins 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 de de, de prêts, mais c'est c'est mauvais dans le sens où après ça il y a plus il y a plus rien comme moi je viens du Cameroun. Puis euh, je suis arrivé au Canada en janvier 2016, mais je sentais que je voulais plus, plus juste que travailler. Je sentais que je devais être entrepreneur parce que mes parents le sont, toute ma famille l'est. J'ai eu la chance de pouvoir euh, développer ce projet avec ma conjointe. Mon nom c'est Sarah Matanda et je suis cofondatrice de la compagnie La Garderie Les Petits Bisounours. C'est vraiment en regardant la communauté comme les besoins en fait qu'on on voyait qu'il y avait beaucoup de plaintes au niveau des garderies. Puis vu que nous, on n'avait pas encore d'enfants, en fait, on se disait, mais est-ce que, quand j'y pense, est-ce que vraiment j'ai envie de traverser ça comme moi, j'aurais des enfants? Notre gros défi, en fait, ça a été vraiment au niveau du personnel parce qu'on avait de la demande avec les promotions qu'on avait faites. Le gros challenge que je dirais que j'ai eu en tant que femme, avec la construction, quand tu es une femme et que tu es jeune en plus, quand tu, tu donnes peut-être des consignes, euh, c'est... <rire> on a l'impression que c'est une petite poupée qui est en train de parler, mais non, en fait, je sais ce que je demande, je sais pourquoi je demande certaines choses. Je dirais que c'est vraiment important d'avoir une femme en affaires, dans le sens où il y a quelqu'un qui est là en train de challenger tes idées aussi. Je n'ai pas les meilleures idées du monde, donc des fois, je pense à des choses, et puis elle, elle pense à d'autres choses et puis on commence à partager nos idées et à la fin de la journée, c est, c est, c est, ça, ça, ça nous unit vraiment encore plus. Moi, j'ai vraiment aimé l'expérience chez FACE. Euh, j'ai adoré vraiment le processus, les intervenants en fait qui nous ont aidés à arriver en fait euh, à avoir le financement. C'était vraiment, la communication était vraiment euh, 
très impressionnante, bien des choses à, aux personnes qui vont postuler chez FACE et de bien se préparer et puis les choses vont bien se passer pour eux. Mon nom est Louis Edgar Jean-François, je suis cofondateur et président du conseil d'administration de la coalition FACE. FACE, l'acronyme veut dire euh, Fédération africaine canadienne de l'économie. Donc, c'est sûr qu'initialement, l'objectif, c'était vraiment de pouvoir euh, répondre à l'enjeu pandémique que vivaient les entrepreneurs. Par contre, c'est important de voir comment on pouvait travailler à mettre en place une solution euh, à long terme pour pouvoir supporter les entrepreneurs issus des communautés noires. Donc, euh, ensemble, on a formé la coalition FACE, puis cette coalition a proposé au gouvernement une initiative pour vraiment répondre aux enjeux que vivent les communautés noires. Euh, L'enjeu d'accès aux capitaux, on parle souvent là, on parle de, des enjeux de racisme systémique, on parle de, à l'intérieur des, des barrières systémiques à l'intérieur des institutions financières. Donc c'est important de pouvoir travailler avec les différentes institutions financières pour les sensibiliser au pourquoi des enjeux d'accès aux capitaux pour les entrepreneurs des communautés noires. Là maintenant, c'est vraiment le troisième challenge, c'est de rejoindre les entrepreneurs, peu importe où ils se situent, qu'ils soient euh, dans les territoires du Nord-Ouest, qu'ils soient dans l'Ouest canadien, qu'ils soient dans l'Atlantique. Donc c'est vraiment de travailler à vraiment les rejoindre, puis les leur faire savoir qu'il y a cette offre de financement, donc il y a ces ressources disponibles pour pouvoir aider leur évolution entrepreneuriale. Well, diversity and inclusion is a priority at BDC, and our approach is first to listen, listen to our clients, listen to our employees, but also to listen to organizations that are serving the communities that we would like to support. Hi, I'm Karen Kastner. I'm the VP of Partnerships and Government Relations at BDC. I want to congratulate FACE on uh, a one-year anniversary, and uh, I know how hard Tiffany and her board and the team have been working, and really the dedication and commitment has been really, really inspiring. Clavistudio is an online design platform for interior designers to decorate 3D replicas of their space using shoppable furniture. When my co-founder and I identified this as a common problem for everyone, we decided to start a business in that, based on our experience. We incorporated a business late 2019, and um, our first funding was from the bank, so we got uh, uh, ATB Financial to provide a line of credit for us. We put some of our savings in the project as well. And then as we started to grow and we wanted to expand into B2B, that means allowing our platform to be used by other professionals, we decided to go source for funds elsewhere. And that was when FaZe Coalition launched their program. And the process was so long and tedious. I know a few people who stopped midway. They just couldn't continue. We followed through because we had a very supportive um, loan officer. And that, that really helped us get to the end. So it was awesome timing for us. And we tapped into it. And we just completed a soft launch of our B2B platform. It's live right now. The platform allows you to be able to view 3D replicas of your space and design to your taste. So brands that you like, colors that you like, you can actually interact with our platform to bring out exactly what you want in your personal, in your physical room. And everything you use for the design, you can buy. What attracted me to FACE was, was really the mandate. Honestly, like the mission behind what FACE um, set out to do was something I wanted to be a part of, um, truthfully. You know, as someone who was previously the president of the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, when it comes to black entrepreneurship, when it comes to advocacy, this is something that I've been passionate about for a long time. And when I saw the mission at FACE, which was there to help, you know, contribute to generating black wealth, that was something I wanted to be a part of. There are not many role models around in Canada that young entrepreneurs can look up to. So that would be a very uh, important piece to the future of black entrepreneurship in Canada. And if you have more people, more people in the space, that's how you see role models develop and encourage the younger ones to uh, also participate in the community. I feel like um, being here in Canada as a Nigerian has afforded me some luxury of being able to, you know, set my goals and actually achieve it, uh, achieve them. Um, I, we have my family, I have my kids, I'm also running my business. And having the ecosystem here 
helps you to start to think about how to improve your business and how to leverage your network and how to grow in an industry. I'm from Jamaica originally, migrated to Canada to study, study at University of Guelph, got my degree, and then was actually working at Guelph when an opportunity arises for me to get into the technology business. But I knew nothing about Diamond. So we started out in 2001 selling, trading rough Diamond and then into polished Diamond and then vertically integrated into jewelry manufacturing. We manufacture chain, rings, pendants, nameplate, just about everything that one would require as a jeweler. Financing was very, very challenging in the beginning. Banks are afraid to risk. Most of the financing came from reinvesting. The small amount that I make, I, can, I reinvest, reinvest over the years, buy a piece of machine here, buy a piece of machine there, until the pandemic, the crisis. I was able to approach BDC. BDC helped me along with FACE. FACE came along and FACE was very instrumental in helping me to accelerate the process of obtaining the machines. I got the maximum amount from FACE and BDC. It based on A, the revenues, the equ equipment that I was looking at, and my business plan. I had a plan working on from 2001. Every black person or entrepreneur or everyone who is striving to be an entrepreneur, A, be bold, focus, and think big. Think outside the box. Feel free to visit us in our showroom and design studio where we'll be able to create just about any piece of jewelry that you'll require. So I, I came to Canada in 2001 uh, from Zimbabwe. First thing when I came into Canada, I noticed that black or most immigrants they did not have support structures to help them achieve desired goals in their countries of origin. Right now, we are into selling renewable solar products. I was funding my own business, bootstrapping and everything. I was kind of hesitant going to the banks because in, yeah, I found that they are very restrictive and they tend to scrutinize um, applications from black, from black moss. First came at the right time for me because uh, we need capital to fund a lot of uh, initial setup activities to make things going, uh, to market my products, and to create sales channels for, 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 for the products, as well as to continue developing my products. I call them uh, portable solar products because they are easy to, to install and they can be used by anyone. They are, the pricing level is very low. When you go to the rural areas, there is no, completely no electricity. So most people, they use kerosene or paraffin, which is hazardous on its own because it causes people to, to inhale smoke. So yeah, that's very important for people to kind of find the right knowledge. Because without right knowledge, you will just be lost. Mon nom c'est Patrick Jabatis, ma position je suis PDG de Centre Fink Cybersécurité. J'ai réussi à obtenir un financement auprès de Face Coalition, un financement pour les entrepreneurs noirs. Ça m'a permis d'ouvrir de nouveaux locaux et puis ça m'a permis aussi d'avoir un fonds de roulement. C'est BDC qui m'a octroyé ce type de financement-là. On a réussi à, à mettre en place toute l'infrastructure, implémenter les, les systèmes que vous voyez ici. Notre mission est de protéger les systèmes des clients. C'est-à-dire qu'on a des analystes de sécurité qui sont dédiés dans le centre de surveillance 24-7 qui détecte en temps réel les cyber-incidents avant que la menace se propage dans le réseau du client. FACE est là pour vous encadrer les entrepreneurs noirs. 
Fait que faites confiance à Face, ils sont là pour vous aider, pour vous soutenir dans votre démarche. N'ayez pas peur, persévérez, vous allez réussir. Mais progressivement, on, on, on évolue, on ajuste la plateforme pour faire en sorte qu'elle soit adaptée et euh, efficace pour les entrepreneurs noirs qui désirent faire une demande de prêt. Really, I think a lot of the learnings was around a lot of communication and making sure that we really are able to convey what we're here to do and how we're able to service our entrepreneurs. To the rest that are in the pipeline, here's the biggest message I give people. We are not a COVID response program, so it's not a shrinking window. And what we have to do is, like I said before, how do we connect folks to the information that they need to be finance ready? But data allows us to inform policymakers. Data allows us to inform institutions. So if we're really going to address barriers that exist, In the larger context, data is what you need. We understood we had to be an organization that would be data-driven, and this would even influence the types of programs that we bring into place. Many entrepreneurs, one face.